So, uh, it's Griffin again. It's getting nicer out. Um, so, I'm figuring let's do one of our inside series on fire starting. Fire burns. Lots of things. Sometimes things you don't want to burn. Uh, if we're going to be doing fire starting, I need your promise that you're not going to go out and start fires in irresponsible places. All right, so um, what we're going to be doing is showing a bunch of different types of friction fires. Now, all of these methods are going to use friction in order to generate enough heat in order to start an ember to start your fire. The first one is using your hands. So what I have here is actually a drill. The tip of it has a stone on here. But a drill and your uh, spindle for uh, your hand drill here is going to be the same thing. It's going to work the same way. So if I was doing this on stone, what you'd do is put this on a piece of stone. Let me grab this. You put this on a piece of stone and then spin it in order to make a hole. So through spinning it really, really fast and for a while, you'd start to drill through there. Now, we're going to use the same idea of spinning it in our hands but we're gonna put it onto a fire board here. Now, the board itself has a little notch in it, uh, and it has an area where we've kind of uh, drilled in before in order to kind of set a, a spot there for it to sit. When I'm spinning it like this, what is actually happening is I'm generating heat, and it's generating kind of dust and powder from the wood that's touching it. So what we're trying to do is build up enough dust right along on the notch there uh, that the heat from spinning this will actually ignite that and make uh, what we're going to use for the base for our fire. Now, this can take a long time. Uh, if your arms aren't built up, your muscles aren't built up to be able to handle it, it can hurt a lot and you might not even be able to generate the power because you need not only the spinning power, but you need the pressure down as you're doing it uh, in order to build up the heat and build those little uh, bits of wood dust down there as well. So there's other methods we can use to actually speed that up too. All right, so a method that we're gonna use in order to speed it up is called a bow drill. Now, bow drill just takes, uh, it looks kind of like a bow, it doesn't look like something you'd be actually be able to fire because it's very loose. But what we want to do is use the bow uh, in here and kind of spin it around our spindle. Now, instead of using our hands to do the spinning, we're gonna use the bow drill itself to do the spinning. And we'll just kind of twist it around like that, and we'll put it in the same in the same place as we would there. But we're also going to use a cap in order to keep it in place. Now, this one it helps if you use your body to kind of stabilize it. And as you press down and spin, you'll start to spin your spindle. Now, this is going to be the same thing. We're after the same goal. We want to create enough powder in there in order to get the hot enough to light. Once the dust and not the stick start smoking, uh, you'll know that you have an ember. When you look at it, there'll kind of be a little bit of like a white, uh, ashy spot on top, and there'll be smoke coming off of the powder itself. There's a lot of different types of material, too, that you can transfer this little ember that you've made into. What I used was white birch, but you can use a lot of different things. The thing that I tend to like to use more often than that is cedar bark. And you can kind of take it and crush it up in your hands and roll it together because you want it to ha kind of have a lot of fibers, a lot of surface area for it to catch onto. With all those fibers, what you're going to do is make a little bird's nest for you to transfer your ember into. Once you transfer your ember into it, you're going to kind of close it up around it to, once again, keep that heat in, and then blow on it gently until it catches flame. For the next step, what you're going to need is small little branches. Um, you want to make sure they're dry. I like to use hemlock. It's got a lot of resin in it, so it burns really well. So you want to take those small branches and put them on top of them, kind of wrap around that burning bark nest that you have ignited. 
As your fire gets bigger, you can start to add larger and larger pieces of wood to it. Well, I'm tired. Uh, one of the main reasons why I think people don't do this as much anymore is generally because this makes your arms tired. It requires a lot of energy and uh, just kind of muscle mass in order to get enough uh, friction and heat in order to get that ember going. So you get kind of sweaty and you get pretty, pretty tired. So anyways, hopefully you had uh, fun learning about some different types of friction fire starting. Um, and if you do try this at home, uh, please be responsible, as I said before, with how and where you start fires. So, uh, check back in later this week for more videos.